way back to the United Kingdom, and we watched Tommy's young Olympians bow out of Phillips Cup contention. From the Phillips Soccer League, action from the Marconi Adelaide City Clash, and we speak with Norwich City's Justin Fashionew. The Australian boy made good, Craig Johnston, joins us for a World of Soccer exclusive, and we also preview this round of Phillips Soccer League in Australia. So certainly an action-packed program, and now my uh, great pleasure in welcoming back to the program our regular panellist, Hugh Johns. Hugh, great to have you back on the program. Thank you, David. And also our very special guest on this weekend's program, Andrew Detra, for the editor of Soccer World. Andrew, great to have you on the program. Thank you, David. Uh, well, Andrew, we certainly want you to stay with us on the world of soccer in our program tonight because we are going to be discussing very soon the merits of guest players playing in Australia. And if we recall, just uh, two weeks ago, Mike Shannon was our special guest on the program. He, of course, is out playing as a guest stint with the Newcastle KB Raiders. But another prominent English First Division player has made his mark on the Australian scene. Mike Hill reports. Giving as good as he got from just Justin Fashioner is one of the most exciting young strikers in English soccer. And here we see him playing for his English club, Norwich City, in their clash with Ipswich Town. Well, Justin Fashioner is now here in Australia as a guest player for the Adelaide City Giants. And last Sunday, a large crowd came out to Marconi Stadium to see his Australian debut. Well, unfortunately, industrial problems caused that debut to be cancelled. But the crowd did get a glimpse of him warming up earlier with the Adelaide City side. Marconi supporters could have been pleased that he wasn't on the park, but their joy was too turned to sorrow in the opening minute when David Mitchell put the Giants one goal ahead. Only three days earlier, David Mitchell had made his Australian debut for the Socceroos against Taiwan. The chance was set up by Bobby Russell, who cut into the box and a good square ball found Mitchell with the simplest of chances. So the scoreline read, Marconi nil, Adelaide Giants won. And it was a taste of things to come for keeper Alan Marr, who was destined for a busy afternoon. The young Adelaide City Giants continued to push forward, none more so than Charlie Villani, who scored number two with a tremendous shot from outside of the penalty area. Well, Charlie Villani is one of the exciting young players coming through from the Giants' junior ranks. And here he picks the ball up just inside his own half. Tremendous confidence going forward. And where's that Marconi defence? But what a shot to finish it off. So the scoreline read, the Adelaide Giants 2, Marconi nil. But Marconi started to come forward, and one wondered if a revival would be on the cards, remembering that these two sides drew 4 all last season. Well, although Marconi put on the pressure, the Adelaide City defence was equal to it. And the nearest they came in the first half was this shot from Tony Henderson, which only finished up in the side netting. But still the attacking moves were coming from the Giants. And here they pick up a loose ball on the halfway line. And a good ball there from Chris Manu finds Johnny Niskahus. And he lays it back in the path of Gary Marocchi. And there's goal number three. Tremendous play here from Adelaide Giants. A good run. And a lovely laid back ball. And Gary Marocchi, who this season we've seen already score goals from this range. His shot is absolutely deadly, and Alan Marr is beaten yet again. So we now have a scoreline of the Adelaide Giants 3, Marconi nil. And still the Giants hadn't finished. Young Charlie Villani there was prevalent all afternoon. And the Marconi fans must have been wondering, when Justin Fashionu can play, where will the Giants find him? Because just on half time, Brian Northcote made it four goals to nil. And again, some good into passing from the Giants. The ball finds Brian Northcote, and that's dispatched in the back of the net with no problems. So we had a half time scoreline of Adelaide Giants four, Marconi nil. While well, Marconi came out in the second half, shown a lot more determination. And five minutes into the second half, Mark Jankovic pulled one back after a good ball from Joe Piccioni. That got the Marconi crowd in a much better frame of mind. And here we see some good finishing from Mark Jankovic. Marconi have pulled one back 
to give us a scoreline of the Adelaide City Giants 4, Marconi 1. Well, in fact, that's how it finished. And after the game, I asked Justin Fashionu, what was the difference between this year's team and last year's? Basically, we were a very good team last year. The, the players were the, one of the top teams in the league, and I didn't think that sometimes they got out of the game what they deserved. I think this, this year they may be trying that little bit harder, fighting for themselves a little bit harder together and I think we're getting what we deserve out of a match you know sometimes you can put in a 100% effort but you don't get back what you deserve and I think that uh, I've watched this game and great so, and I'll be struggling to get in the team so <laughs> anybody interested to a striker uh, when did you start playing soccer I started playing as an amateur at four actually from a primary school but that was just um, messing about kicking the football about I started playing seriously when I was um, about 12 just starting secondary school and I was training with the school team which was quite professionally run you know for an amateur team and then at 14 I was um, approached by a professional team Peterborough and I was coaching with them for a long time and then I went to Norwich so I've been coached from about 12 onwards professionally. Just in fashion you know in England you've got an England 20, under 21 cap I presume the ambition now is for a full international cap? Uh, yeah it's every soccer player's ambition to play for their national team whoever they play for I've played uh, seven times the under 21s now and it's a schooling for, hopefully, the first team. When it will come, I don't know. But uh, I'll just keep plugging away. I keep playing for the uh, under-21s who've selected each uh, time there's a game. And hopefully, when Ron Greenwood or whoever thinks that I'm uh, good enough or ready, then put me in and I'll do my best. We've heard over here at one stage you were a, a boxing champion. When was this uh, part of your career? <laughs> yeah, I started boxing about 14 when I was at secondary school just because I was at my mate's house and he was going boxing so I thought I might as well go and watch and I joined in as you do I was just saying joined in enjoyed it and it just went on from there and um, I found that I wasn't too bad at it and got to two finals but uh, I lost both of them to the same fella so I was only number two in England so I gave that up because I don't like being number two. Has boxing stood you in good stead in your soccer career? <laughs> yes, as physically, because I feel that the, the training which you do in boxing helps on the football field. But as far as uh, the actual boxing art, no, it, it's been OK. I, I think it has helped me because it gives you um, self-restraint at times. At times, I said. <laughs> You'll stay here in Australia. You were here last year with Adelaide yes. City. What made you come back, come back again? Well, I'm pleased you asked that question because it, it gives me the opportunity to say that it was... I had such a good time here last year that I couldn't not come back because the Adelaide people, the spectators, the players and the officials looked after me so well that I said that if I came back to Australia that I would definitely go back to Adelaide. Was there any chance of you going to America this year? This seems to be the most popular thing with That's British what, players. Yeah, um, America, I could have gone to America, but the thing is that... Um, it's not the same because you need a bit of a break. Well, as far as I, I'm concerned, I do. And I come over here on the set. On, you play Sundays. On the Sundays, I play football. But during the week, it, I can relax a bit. I train, but it's a holiday as much as anything. But if you go to the States, I'm back in exactly the same situation as I was in England. You know, um, every single day you, you you got pressures and things like that. And I think you need a break from that. What does the future hold now for Justin Fashion here with Norris relegated to the second division? It leaves it. I'm a very ambitious player, and uh, I think that if you're going to get in the England team, if you're going to become a, a, the tops, as far as I'm concerned, worldwide player, you've got to play in the best standard of football you possibly can. And uh, I don't think that second division football is really what is needed at this moment in time for me so I can't see myself staying at Norwich. But you haven't requested a transfer at this stage? No, no, I haven't requested a transfer but um, Norwich know exactly my feelings They're the, I've been there for five years now, they know exactly what the situation is and uh, I think if a club came in with a good offer or a reasonable offer that they wouldn't stand in my way. And you want to stay in England, no thoughts of going to Europe? Well, at this moment no, but you, you don't know what, what happens. You know, if I went to a European team, 
I don't know. I don't know. I'm just, at the moment, I'm just here to play for Adelaide City and I'm forgetting about everything else. And play he did, and it was his goal that put uh, Adelaide Giants through to the semi-finals as they beat Heidelberg. <laughs>